Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting up a Fire Slayer Rune Sun. Now, this is a continuing the series of these models that are already pre-built and primed. Well, I primed this one myself, but moving on. With Corn Red, Waz Daka Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Troll Slayer Orange, Uriel Yellow, and Dorn Yellow. Not really, I choose not to use it in the end. We're going to paint the largest part of his body, his hair. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Corn Red. And pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to go from darkest color to lightest color. We're then going to take Waz Daka Red and we're going to overbrush this on. And once that is done, we will take Evil Sun Scarlet and we will dry brush this on in all directions. Up, down, right, and left onto the beard and along the ridges for his crest. Now once we get to Troll Slayer Orange, we will then uh, lightly dry brush all over the beard and we will... Uh, dry brush the upper half of his crest upper half upper quarter now the thing with the beard is that it begins to look kind of grainy filmy uh, like bad when I add the troll slayer orange so I decide to go in and with a fine detail brush start painting all the edges of the beard to add some uh, like solid lines onto it because it looked just messy with the troll slayer orange and once that was done, I just went to Uriel Yellow and I just painted the edges and the tips of the hair. And then moving on to the skin with Jacaro Orange, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Lamian Median, and Cadian Flesh Tone, we will paint the skin. We're going to start off with a base layer of Jacaro Orange. And once that's completely applied, we will then take a one-to-one -one mix of Skeleton Horde Contrast and Lamian Medium, with a little bit of water mixed in to make it flow better, and we will apply this all over the skin. And once that is done, we're going to go back with Jacaro Orange, and we're going to highlight 90-95% to of all the skin with this. Only the deepest darkest recesses will have this, uh, will have the skeleton horde visible. And once that is done, we're going to go with Jacaro Orange and Cadian Flesh Tone in a one-to-one -one mix and we're going to apply this on hmm, 50 to 60 percent of the flesh. Maybe 70 to 80 on certain parts of the back because they're just giant chunks of back flesh. And so we apply this and we want to have the Jacaro Orange and the Skeleton Horde Contrast layer visible through this and this is just a fine highlight. And now with Warplock Bronze, Balthazar Gold, and Brass Scorpion, we're going to paint his helmet. We're going to start by layering the entire helmet with Warplock Bronze. Now once that is done, we're going to overbrush, which is like, part, like a slightly wetter dry brush, and apply this on all the edges of his helmet. And once that is done, we're actually going to go back with Balthazar Gold, and we're going to apply straight lines onto the edges, pointy spikes, and stuff of his helmet. And once that is done, we're going to go with Brass Scorpion and with we're going to paint straight lines onto the well, pointy bits and stuff. And now with Lead Belcher and Nuln Oil, 
we're going to paint all his weapons and silver metal pieces. We're going to start off with a layer of lead belcher all over. And once that has dried, usually with the help of a hair dryer, we're going to move on and we're going to coat everything in Nuln oil. And then once that is done, we're going to dry brush slash overbrush with lead belch again. And now with corn red, wasdaka red, evil sun scarlet, troll slayer orange, uriel yellow, and dorn yellow, we're going to paint the little fire that's coming out one of his axes. And we're going to start off with a layer of dorn yellow. So this entire process in the end is going to be just going from lightest to darkest. The whole thing is in Dorn Yellow, and then we overbrush with Uriel Yellow, only the Dorn Yellow will be barely visible through, just a few lines of that. Then we move up to Troll Slayer Orange, overbrushing again, having the previous two layers not completely covered. Then we move on to Evil Suns, then to Waz Daka, and then we finish with Corn Red. Now, there are briars, like fire briars, into some of their axes. So I tried like dry brushing a bit of the colors going from lighter to dark onto the axe and that didn't really work too well. In the end for the brazier, what I did was I started going from light to dark and I just took the wet paint and I just stipled it in with a detail brush, just a few tap 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 taps going from light to dark to make it look like fire. And back to corn red, wasdaka red, evil sun scarlet, and troll slayer orange, we're going to paint the uh, cloths on him. We're going to start off with a layer of corn red. Now the front part has a bunch of scales and I'm going to take the easy route and I'm going to dry brush them. So at first I'm going to start off with corn red as a base and then I'm going to move on to Wazdaka red. I'm going to layer it on and then once that's done I'm going to layer on Evil Sun's Scarlet, not Troll Slayer Orange. Except for like that symbol on his back flap. I then take a dry brush and I'm going to apply Wazdaka Red. I'm basically going to go from the darkest red to lightest in a series of dry brushes. I'm going to go up and down, right and left to get these colors onto the scales and such and such. And now with Rhinox Hide, we're painting the thick leather belt he wears, and the leather strap on his little throwing axe. And once again, I didn't make these bases, my brothers did, he followed the Games Workshop tutorial to do it, so I don't know how, he supplied them, and well, it saves me some time and effort, and I'm just going to super glue the model directly on. I realized I had forgotten this step earlier, this should have gone on before the metallics, but now I'm going to varnish. 
So with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and, and, and Army War Painter or Army Painter War Paints Anti Shine Matte Varnish, we're going to seal this model. Now the Ultra Matte is going to go on all the hair and all his skin and the flaps. The Anti Shine Matte Varnish is going to go onto his axes, and that's it. And now we are improving. I didn't like how the metallic runes on the Rune Father were last time, so we're going to go big. We're going to use Vallejo Liquid Copper, Liquid Gold Old Gold, and Liquid Gold Gold Color. So we're going to start with Liquid Copper as a base for all the runes into his flesh, as well as a bit on his axe, some on the side of his helmet, as well as a few other metal pieces, and this will be the foundation color. And once that is done, we're going to go with old gold, which is a aged darker gold, but still lighter than copper. And we're going to coat the brass this, well most of it. You'll still see some of the brass through, or copper through. And then once that is done, we're going to do a final highlight with the liquid gold onto the back. Arrow. This is basically recovering like eh, 70 to 80 percent of the runes. This this is going to be a very bright, shiny white gold, and it's really going to shine on the runes. And finally, I use super glue on the little leather strap on the axe and apply it to the model. And it is done. Well, this was a quick project to do after Christmas. I did this Saturday and the afternoon of Sunday. Easy, quick and simple. Now, this project, I did some improvements from the Rune Father. The runes that I did on the Rune Father were not that good or like they were too dull. They should have been shinier, so I went a bit more ham with them, and they look better. Now, his beard looks really good. The combination of the dry brushing and the straight lines on the paint really did bring out his hair. And the reason I didn't use Dornielle is because it's a very light white, and it kind of looks like gray hairs, and Rune Sons are not exactly that old, at least I don't think in the lore. And I wanted the father to be like gray hair, and the younger son to be, well, not gray. As well as, oh, what should I call it? Uh, his eyes. The, I, I can't actually show how I do the eyes. I just can't because it has to be like right up to my face. It is a very delicate procedure. It's like doing surgery. But basically, I just take a white paint of my choice, in my case, white scar, and I do a few tap, tap, taps into the eyelid. I actually uh, mix the paint and then I clean the brush and then just apply paint back onto the brush, only onto the tip. Tap, tap, tap in. And then I take my micro pen and then I just tap, tap, tap and make the dots. And then I clean it up with uh, the Cadian Flesh Tone, which was nearby, just in case. But I didn't have to clean up. I actually did it on my first go with no issues. 
So, as far as the project goes, I did make some improvements. Um, the flesh, I still feel it's a little bit too much of a contrast, but it does show better from a distance, so... Mm. His beard came out much better. His weapons are kind of lackluster. The fire one is nice. I can't judge myself on the base because I didn't actually paint the base. But if I were to give myself, I... In some places it's really good, but it like doesn't wow. It doesn't impress in some areas. I... I'm, I feel it's a 7. I feel like this is a 7 out of 10. Alright. Moving on, I've been doing projects in the background uh, that take a very long time involving resin, but soon enough I'll be moving on. Uh, my airbrush is finally up and running, so I'll be able to go back to some of my other projects. I haven't decided between Nurgle or you know, some more 3D printed Space Marines or stuff. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I'll, I'll decide later this week, so yeah. So, yeah. Like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, subscribe for more, comment if you have anything to comment or nitpick or whatever, um, and yeah, oh, and even though it's two days late, Merry Christmas, y'all, I hope you had a great haul this year, I got a pair of pants, it was awesome. <laughs>